Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 signs a horror movie is gonna suck. That means we're looking at the tells and characteristics that strongly suggest a horror movie is going to be subpar. All right, let's get to the list. Number 10, it's a remake of a classic. The classics are classics for a reason, and you should never, ever touch them. Yeah, its production value may leave something to be desired in the modern age, but we like to think that most people will look past that. You got a plan? Uh, you? How about a barbecue? There are notable exceptions to the remake rule, like Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead or Alexandre Aja's The Hills Have Eyes, but for the most part, remakes are real stinkers. The Omen, The Wicker Man, The Amityville Horror, Black Christmas, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and to some extent, Rob Zombie's Halloween movies, they all disappoint. No! For all their modern effects, they feel like soulless cash grabs meant to coast on brand recognition alone. And don't even get us started on the more recent Freddy and Jason outings. Number 9. Bad Acting of course, bad acting will ruin any movie, but scary movies in particular require quality performances in order to sell the horror. If the actors are bad, we're not convinced they're in any danger, and the movie loses all sense of tension and immersion. Remember the Blair Witch Project? I'm serious, I don't have the map, okay? Heather, that is so not cool, man. I know it's not that cool. That is so not cool. I know it's not cool. The acting was so convincing, audiences actually thought the footage was real. Or how about The Shining? Jack Nicholson made you believe he was actually going crazy, and it was deeply unnerving. But when you have some poor child actor, damsel in distress, or frat boy number six that can't sell their situation, it can completely ruin what could have been an otherwise decent horror flick. They're eating her! And then they're going to eat me! Oh my god! Number 8. It's based on a video game. If a horror movie is based on a video game, better stay far, far away. Then again, the same could be said about all video game adaptations. You're all going to die down here. Most of them are little more than an exercise in disappointment. Hey, we said most, not all. Yes, there are a few exceptions like the first Resident Evil, but there have been far more misses than hits. Your mileage may vary with some of the bigger titles like Doom and Silent Hill, but both of these movies were critically eviscerated upon release. However, things really fall apart once you start getting into Uva Bowl territory. Blood Rain, House of the Dead, and Alone in the Dark were all critically panned, with the latter being considered among the worst films ever made. Travel light. Carrying enough baggage for the both of us, trust me. Number 7. Bad CGI. Much like bad acting, bad CGI can instantly take you out of a movie. Worse, it can make you laugh. When it comes to horror, there's simply no beating good old-fashioned practical effects. Just look at the thing! But whether it's due to time and or budget constraints or simple laziness, a lot of modern horror movies take CGI shortcuts. The 2011 remake of The Thing is a perfect example of how CGI can utterly ruin a horror film. Bad CGI similarly made the infected look goofy in I Am Legend. Though It Chapter 2 was by no means a terrible film, dodgy CGI definitely resulted in a lot of disappointment. Bottom line, CGI is a great tool, but use it sparingly and make sure it's top notch. Number 6. An Overindulgence in Horror Tropes you can usually tell from the trailer just how tropey a horror movie's gonna be. Some trailers entice you with their mood. For example, The Lighthouse has a fantastic trailer that doesn't give much away. Watches fill your beans. But then you see something like The Nun or Truth or Dare, and you already get the feeling it's gonna suck. Jump scares galore, stupid character choices, some spooky legend, screaming faces, creepy things standing in the background, and predictable fake-out scares. <laughs> You've seen them all a thousand times before, and after the 976th time, they sort of just stop being scary, you know? Of course, you can't always judge a book by its cover, or in this case, a movie by its trailer, but sometimes you can. Number 5. Poorly Designed Monsters and Villains 
This is another thing you can typically judge by the trailers and posters. A lot of cheap horror movies don't really put a ton of effort into their villains. Yellow contacts and some blood don't exactly make for a classic bad guy. Truth or dare, Ronnie. Some monsters are lazy and cliche, like the Bye Bye Man's cloaked figure, and some are unintentionally hilarious, like the smiling people of Truth or Dare or the Slender Man. If there's one thing the Blair Witch Project and 2016's Blair Witch taught us, it's that less is often more when it comes to the supernatural. Number 4. A January Release It's no secret that January is a dumping ground for movies. And if a horror flick is released in January, it's often a hint that it's going to be a special kind of awful. There have been a good number of truly dreadful horror movies released in the last few Januaries. Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, and Devil's Due in 2014. Please, let's go. We got <laughs> The Woman in Black sequel in 2015, The Forest and The Boy in 2016, The Bye Bye Man in 2017, Insidious The Last Key in 2018. 2019 had Escape Room, which certainly wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. Chances are that if it is a January release, it's going to be some lower budget, jump scare riddled mess without much originality. <laughs> <laughs> number 3. A High-Numbered Sequel Here's a golden rule. If a horror series goes beyond two entries, chances are those numbered sequels will be lame. The first couple of Saw movies were pretty good, but somewhere along the way to eight installments, it became mindless torture porn. While a ninth film is scheduled for 2020, the franchise's track record doesn't necessarily give us high hopes. You will never feel again. Please. There are seemingly countless Halloween, Friday the 13th, and A Nightmare on Elm Street movies, each one usually more ridiculous than the last. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Exorcist, and Jaws all saw unnecessary and terrible sequels. Michael. What have they done to you? The Conjuring was a great film, but now we have an entire Conjuring universe, because apparently we can't tell a simple ghost story without it becoming a whole cinematic event. Number 2. An Over-Reliance on Jump Scares We don't mind a well-placed and well-timed jump scare or two, but it's a significant problem when the movie's only tactic is to bombard you with sudden screams and loud screeches. Oh, take my hand! <laughs> Luckily, you can usually tell from the trailer if a movie's gonna rely too heavily on jump scares. They'll include about three or four in the trailer alone, and all are as predictable as you could possibly imagine. When you're tired of the jump scares in the trailer, just imagine how bored you'll feel during the movie itself. There's a reason why the term jump scare has become a bad word in horror circles. Enough with the jump scares, kid. Who are you running from? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. A PG-13 Rating We're not saying that all PG-13 horror movies are bad. In fact, there have been more than a few quality ones over the years. But there's no denying that a large majority of them are trading scare factor for bigger box office potential. Our rating often allows for a more immersive and scarier atmosphere. Characters swear as they naturally would, blood pours out of wounds as they naturally would, and the movie can show more disturbing content, which affects us on a more primal and emotional level. He's out there, he's outside, he's, he's watching me through the windows. Did you see him? No, but I know he can see me, he knew when I went okay. upstairs. take a deep breath. PG-13 horror movies often come across as sanitized products meant to appeal to teenagers and as wide an audience as possible which generally means safe and inoffensive material. Many of those qualities are likely to lead to a bad horror movie. Nothing worse than a PG-13 horror movie, am I right? No, but seriously, when I was reading this list, I got to the over-reliance on horror tropes entry, and all I could think about was Cabin in the Woods and how it was done right, so it worked. And that's the case for anything on this list. Anyway, so what's your number one sign that a horror movie's gonna suck? 
Let us know in the comments or come talk to me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton. Also, be sure to like and subscribe and please watch this other video.